This is Stepping Stones Museum for Children, a vision of what is a fun learning environment for children. It is also the premier children's museum in Connecticut. And in this award-winning venue, the amazing Color Coaster, an interactive George Rhodes sculpture, this kinetic work of art will serve as the starting line for an energy-filled race around the museum and beyond. Four teams will now have the chance to win the amazing energy race. The four teams are Biff and Buffy, a couple and outstanding middle school athletes from Northtown, Connecticut. I have led the Spartans to victories on the football field, the hockey rink, and the baseball diamond. When my opponents see me, they know I am in it to win it. I work just as hard at cheerleading and gymnastics. Sports are really important to us, but we also care about our community. We love kids too. Biff helps coach the Little League and we both participate at the Unified Sports Center School. People sometimes think Biff is just some dumb jock and I'm just a cheerleader, but they're wrong. In reality, we're both really good kids. But let's not forget that we are outstanding athletes and I am really handsome. So true, I'm pretty cute too. Between the two of us, we have countless athletic accomplishments. But now our goal is to be the winners of the amazing energy race. Grace and Ellie, two academic overachievers from Southtown, Connecticut. Grace and I have been teammates ever since the end of sixth grade when we met during the finals of the National Middle School Quiz Bowl. No one can hit the buzzer and answer questions like Grace. Since then, we have competed together in the National Academic Bowl, the Scholastic Bowl, and the National Science Bowl. Did I mention we did this all while taking a course load of AP classes in middle school? When we get to high school, we will both surely be National Merit Scholars, and I know we will both be the valedictorians of our class. Let's face it, we have superior intelligence. I mean, I have been in gifted and talented programs since preschool. I came out of the womb smarter than everyone else. Come on, Grace, that's a bit much. Oh, Ellie, get real. Combine our IQs over 400. There's no way we're not going to win the amazing energy race. Nadia and Maggie are best friends from Easttown, Connecticut. At our school, people can find me in the art studio painting and drawing, or in the media lab working on a graphic design project or a film. Maggie, well, Maggie is our drama queen. <laughs> Nadia and I love the arts, and we're always there to support each other. That's why we're best friends. Nadia's the most amazing artist, and her videos are fantastic. She was the grand prize and most creative award winner for her film in the Youth Film Festival. That's because you started it, Mag. <laughs> Thanks, Nads. Maggie is the best actress our school has ever seen. Well, I don't know about that, but I do work hard and I'm president of the drama club. The arts really help us to see the world in different ways. And as a result, we have a couple of tricks up our sleeves. People may not think we're competitive, but we just might surprise everyone. John and Jennifer are cousins who are also really good friends. Our moms are sisters, and they're always telling their friends how lucky they are to have such good kids. We are good kids, Jennifer. <laughs> John and I are really glad that we go to the same school. We've always been really close, and we have a lot of the same interests. Such as being on a student council and volunteering every Sunday at our local food pantry and soup kitchen. In addition, we're both on our local swim team, and we love to compete in our youth tennis league. Jen and I work hard in school to make sure that we're always on the honor roll. Jennifer is a whiz at math, Aww. and she's always willing to help me when I need it. Of course. You're always there to help if I need an idea for an English paper or a history assignment. People usually see us as just your typical nice kids, but Jen and I are far from average. We're hard workers and a great team. We're ready for the amazing, amazing energy race. In just a few moments, you will all be heading off to an amazing exhibit inside the museum. There, you will be taking part in a thrilling challenge that will energize you in new and exciting ways. Now, you know that most of you will be eliminated, but if you do make it to the final leg and cross the finish line first, you will be the winner of the amazing energy race. The first clue can be found in the multimedia gallery. Now, when I say go, you can run down there. Is everybody ready? Yeah! Right, let's get this race started. And go! The 
The Energy Lab provides fun ways for children to learn about different sources of energy. For your first task, you must send one partner into the Energy Lab to identify and create a list of all the various sources of energy used in the exhibit. Once you think you have listed everything, you must run and meet your partner who will be waiting for you at the welcome desk. There, you must read the list off to a staff member. If you have succeeded in finding all of the sources of energy, you will receive the next clue. If you have failed to find all of the sources, however, you must return to the energy lab and write down the remaining sources. Good luck. Identify the three sources of energy that provide energy for the museum building and take photos to show evidence of each source. When you have all the images, go directly to the community garden. I saw a wind turbine outside. Let's start there. Hydropower, solar power, and wind power. Yep, that's it. Okay, we saw the wind turbine outside and the solar panels on the roof. They must use natural gas too. I guess we'll just have to go around the building until we find the meter. We got this. Sun, wind, water, and natural gas. Coal, oil, and uranium. Yes, that's all of them. Way to go, Bip. Okay, so we found the solar panels in the wind turbine. Where's the natural gas meter? Maybe we should ask somebody for help. No, dummy, we are brilliant. Keep looking. <laughs> well, I saw panels on the roof, and the turbine is outside, so those are easy. Let's ask somebody about the other energy source. Excuse me, besides wind and solar power, do you know what else provides energy for this museum? Yes, I'm the director of operations for this museum, and I know everything there is to know about this building. And we use natural gas. And that meter can be found outside of the loading dock, under the window on the side of the building. Thank you so much. Let's go, Biff. That's it! I'm sorry, Jen. I just couldn't find it. It's okay. We don't know how the other teams are doing either. Okay, well, we saw the wind turbines and the solar panels outside when we came in. We just need to find out what else they use. Your dad is a property manager, right? He knows about stuff like this. 
We just need to find a property manager for this museum. I, excuse me? Uh, do you know where I could find a property manager for this building? I think you mean Mike. He's our director of operations. Do you want me to give him a call? Please, can you ask him what the museum uses to power the building? Sure. Hi Mike, it's Lee at the Welcome Desk. I have two kids here wondering what the museum uses to power the building. Okay, I'll let them know. Mike says we use natural gas to power the building. You can find the meter underneath the window by the loading dock. Thank you. Congratulations, Biff and Buffy. You are team number one. All right. Come on, we still have to get photos of the solar panels and the wind turbines. We better hurry. Nadia and Maggie, you are team number two. Yes! Grace, we need to ask them while we're running out of time. No, we can find this. Excuse me, but could you please tell me? Let me guess, you're looking for the gas meter? It's underneath the window by the loading dock. John and Jennifer, you are the third team to arrive. Grace and Ellie, I'm sorry to tell you, but you are the last team to arrive with your photos and have been eliminated from the race. I can't believe this. How did we lose to people with substandard intelligence? Come on, Grace. Maybe we can learn something about asking for help when we need it.